uh, let's welcome to the Alan Sar Studios for the very first time, I think, uh, Safira Kaka. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Salma, and all the listeners of Radio Alan Sar. It is magnificent and fantastic beyond, to be on air with you today. And I have to admit, the the, <laughs> se- the smells. The... When you come to Durban, there has to be the towels. Of course. You have to have the towels. That was the first thing I said. Now, I'm going to make Safira come all the way at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning <laughs> when she could be relaxing in a hotel. But I've got to make it worth her while. Make sure there's something there for her. You know me, team enjoy. food all the way. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So while we're unpacking these lovely goodies from Steers, you've been celebrating recently. Is it over two decades that you've been on, on radio? Yes. It's yes. been over 20 years. Your name, I didn't even have to do a formal introduction because people already know, they're very <laughs> familiar with you already. You've been in it for so long. Um, we always talk all the time that the, the Muslim media industry is is cannot be underestimated in Absolutely. any way the power that it holds in the homes in the mm-hmm. communities what it's done what has that been like for you that that how you've just become a part of everyone's life even though maybe people you haven't met yet but but how important is that in this is this industry it's been a surreal feeling to realize that uh, 20 years ago, June 2004, I stepped into a radio station wow. for the very first time. And, you know, stepping into the studios today, it evokes that very same feeling, that excitement, that uh, countdown to when we're going to be on air. And yes, we can never, ever underestimate the importance of Islamic media, especially in this day and age, taking a look at what is happening currently in Gaza. And it's been, for me, it's different facets of it, Salma. You know, you get judged very uh, harshly. People think, why are you dedicating time in to Islamic media? But at the very same time, I don't think there's anything in my life that I found more rewarding than giving back to the community through this way. Again, just coming into the studio and being on radio, to me, it comes so naturally. You know, I, to address a room full of people is nerve-wracking. To be on air is something that I think I was born to do. So alhamdulillah for the opportunity. Alhamdulillah to serve the community. It's not an easy task as you fully know you know behind the scenes there's a lot of admin there's a lot of things that we need to do there's a lot of struggles that we have personally that nobody knows about but it's at the very same time i think we're leaving behind a very powerful legacy and i hope we can nurture the young ones of of this generation to take up Islamic media. I mean, uh, we've been in the game for very long. I don't view any woman in this space as competition. Everybody deserves to be in the space. Everybody, they have to be empowered in the space. We, I will give uh, airtime to any Muslim woman in media because I know the struggles of it. And we are very small, we're a small community. And I just want to nurture young people and uh, nurture their minds and encourage them to follow this path because really and truly it's, it's all about giving back. Fantastic. I love you brought up so many. Sometimes there's points. nice books like yeah, chips yeah, on it. There we go. That's the other advantage. Yes, I'm being the radio. Go for the chips. I'm giving you some Steers chips. They asked if there's one for you as well. And Steers apparently at one point won their best chips, wasn't it? At one point, mm. they, they had the best, uh, most original chips. You can't I'm a potato chips. girl, so yeah, you I'll go for the chips. Genuine first. chips. It's mm. not the, the fake ones. Yes. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is real potato chips. Um, so we're enjoying that. And I'm not sure my flavor tastes very there's like a Turkish delighty sort of strawberry flavor going on there. But that's a delicious one. You've got a milkshake also, Asif enjoying his milkshake. But you made such an important point uh, about you, often what happens is once you've gained a certain amount of experience in the industry, you think, okay, you need to now step out. Mm-hmm. You need to now go into to, to, um, commercial radio or you need to go out into different facets of radio. But I feel sometimes the biggest way, like you said, not only giving back, but it's empowering. Of course. It's building our of community course. radio. It's building Islamic media. We need to encourage um, young individuals today, matriculants, to, to study journalism, to get 100%. into investigative journalism, to be on TV, mm-hmm. to be represented, to of get course. into in any media. way you can give back. Do you, do you find in Johannesburg as well, even you find a lot of interest from the younger generation in getting into the field? Yes and no. Yeah. Um, we never got into the field for the fame. You know, right. when we started off, it was that real passion for media um, in this generation. And I, I don't want to grossly generalize, but it's a lot about instant gratification. It's about uh, the follows and the likes. And mm. I think our path, our trajectory was first being on shows behind the scenes doing the menial tasks and then you slowly built it up and then we started to incorporate social media right. and through social media you welcome a yet another audience you do get well known but it's not about the fame it's not about being recognized it's not being an influencer it's not about getting free stuff it's about dedicating time to your craft and unfortunately i think young people 
there is an interest. I used to host media development workshops a lot in Johannesburg yes. at the schools. But the first thing they want to know is, I want to do this because I want to be an influencer. I want to do this because I want likes and follows and I want mm. people to know me. Some and YouTube it's channel. not about yeah. that. It's not being well known is not a good thing. It's not, you know, privacy is a is, is an asset in this day and age. It's a very wonderful thing to have to be a private person and not to be known so yeah it's kind of like you've got to encourage the youth that you start everybody starts somewhere you've got to build you've got to build yeah. this brand you've got to build your your rapport with your listeners what was your first show soma you know that first show it sticks in our mind yes. the ums you and the ahs and the called you and supported you yes of yeah. course and then that, that almost like your face is burning like oh my god i can't believe i said that on air but uh, <laughs> you build slowly but surely you keep building it every show is an opportunity is a springboard of what can i do better it's not i'm going to sit with a show this was a fantastic show i'm going to be proud and boastful about the show it's like what can i do better well, how can I improve? And that's how we built up um, to where we are. And I hope our young people can be encouraged to join and start from the very bottom and build up their careers in Islamic media. We can offer free mentorship at any point. Yeah, we, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that because also just opening the platform uh, to, to have people and collaboration, how important that is, like you mentioned that as well. Chicken wings, it looks like we've got some chicken, got a lot of chips, some milkshake, and you got into the, Safira got into the Debonair's pizza. What is that? Like pizza? It's almost like a, like a quesadilla wrap thing. Yeah. It's very, very nice. This is a chicken tikka flavor yeah. and it's it's very tasty. It's very well seasoned. Do you have, well have it sometimes with the pizza to fold it over? Yes, I, I do. I love doing that. And I have to tell you, Sama, I'm like team homemade. So yeah. I only, I don't eat takeouts. So like everything is homemade. So I have to say flavors are amazing. <laughs> a very, very good flavor. And it's very well seasoned. Lovely. Love Here's one for you. It's a barbecue one for you, Asif. You can enjoy that one. Well, I shall tuck into the creamy chicken while I'm going to ask Safira again. <laughs> now, something else people got for, when it came to your programs, mm -hmm. a lot with your shows, but it's not just about presenting a radio mm -hmm. program. And that's what I wanted to ask you is a lot of it is engaging with women on, yes. on your social media. You yes. raise some really interesting, pertinent issues. Yes. Sometimes it's polygamy if it's not it's divorce if it's losing your children but it's important things but what i find truly incredible is how much people are not getting the opportunity to actually say mm. what do you think maybe um, muslim media platforms need to do more of to actually rip apart these topics because there's so much that you're seeing it's talked about on podcasts and things yeah. and we'll get to your podcast soon yes but how much do you think there actually is that isn't being said that needs to be said on our platforms you know so <clears throat> A couple of years ago, I took this brave step. I said, I'm making an Instagram page. I had like five followers on the page. And every day I would post content on my page mm -hmm. consistently. And I said, Instagram is, it's a, it's, there's things there. There's people there. There's people trying to sell you things. I want to give back to the community in some way. So every week I would pose a question and I'd say, what's your thoughts on this question? Yeah. And it started to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And eventually I had to take it over to my next page because I actually run out of stories. Yeah. And I realized that so many people are going through so much and they want to be heard. Yeah. People want a platform to say, my mother-in-law is working on my nerves today. Yes, I know. Or, <laughs> you know, my husband has been cheating and this is a yeah. big issue in my life. Or I'm having issues with my child or I have an autoimmune or I can't sleep at night or this is bothering me or my mental health mm -hmm. is deteriorated. After COVID, these open lines got so intense that yeah. I felt like people were trauma dumping on me in the DMs. And I actually felt like I needed to go for therapy because I was it was too much. And my therapist is like, you have two shoulders. You don't need to carry you the went world. To a therapist? I went for therapy. I had to go and speak to somebody because it got overwhelming because I would be up at night thinking this auntie is going through something oh and how God. do I help her? And as much as we advocate for mental health, the reality of the matter is that there is not help available. Firstly, it's expensive to get mental health resources is very expensive and it's not easily available. Also, some people, a lot of people have taken up this life coaching, rightfully so. They're the amazing life coaches, but some are doing it for money. You know, it's it's a it's become a big money making scheme. Mm -hmm. It's an issue where if you go to a life therapist and now she's going to tell your issues to everybody else. And again, a lot of people are not qualified. If you are going through deep trauma, you need to see somebody who's qualified to help you. So it's been 
me all alone with Atlas, Atlas Shoulders, trying to um, figure out how I can connect people to the right therapies, the right resources, and to help people. Because once again, some people just need a, a, a space to vent. <laughs> I've eventually compartmentalized it. And I said, you know what, this is the, 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 the platform. Say what you need to say, do what you need to do. And if I can, I will be able to help. But it's been, in, in, it's been incredible. It's been really hectic as well. I, I won't lie. It's taken a lot of toll on me. I can think imagine. I've aged like five years. I can no, I can imagine. And it's mm. such a it's such a reality as well when you say you think of the woman and what she's going through, and mm. you realize that as much as we think we have so many ulama in our country, we have yes. so many organizations, mm. um, we have so many collecting funds for different places and parts of the world, but your next door neighbor may be going through the worst yes. and and uh, unable to get any like help. Like COVID at all. for me was shocking. Like I would know somebody and she's driving a BM and she's like, Sif, we've been living credit card to credit card and I don't have money for bread and milk. Please help me. Wow. And I'm like, okay, but can't you go? To, I can't go to anybody in the community. People are going to judge me. I can't go to an NPO because look at me. Look at my life from the outside. I've got kids in private school. I didn't expect COVID to happen. I didn't expect lockdown to happen. I didn't expect to lose my income. Everything we love on credit, please help me. I need a loaf of bread and milk. And this and is I, a strange job. This is... It's somebody who's been following my page. Wow. And I'm like, okay, um, I need to make a plan. And luckily, I have this really good friend, her name is Shakira, and she's a C, an accountant, and she would help me to facilitate assistance. But it just made me realize that what we see from the outside is not the full picture. People, everybody, you, me, engineer, everybody, we're going through something. Don't judge people from the external and just be kind to people out there because you have no idea the struggles people are going through. You have no idea the pain people are going through. As a, you know, on radio as well, we have like this whole put together persona. You've got to come on and sound happy no matter what you <laughs> You do. You can be crying and then you're like wiping the tears and you're like, okay, I need to do As-salamu my show. Assalamu alaikum. Um, everybody's going through something. Wow. Guys, be kind out there. It's, 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 it's not easy. People are, are struggling. Oh, I'm going to talk more about that for sure. But uh, we, the show today is brought to you by Steers and Debonair Sparks Road. While I'm tucking into my creamy chicken, which is literally the most delicious thing, it's I need lovely. to order more of this. It's, it's really literally lovely. like I'm going to show it to the camera. Yeah, it's really nice. that, she's got a chicken tikka one. We gave Asif the barbecue. I think there's Macon in there as well. Um, and my one is creamy chicken. And we've got a bunch of other things that are new on the Steers menu and on the Debonair's menu as well. So you can rush over to Debonair's and Steers on Sparks Road. But now here's your number a track ever felt like life's tests and trials are too difficult to withstand and Safira did not know what the next track would be in Break the Chains Mahir Zain reminds us that even in our darkest and most difficult moments we have the strength to rise this powerful song speaks to Palestine and every heart that's been broken but refuses to give up with Allah's will and his strength we can heal find courage and break free from our chains and Debonair's on Sparks Road and they've sent a bunch of things for us to enjoy in studio. We've got our milkshakes, we got our Steers chippies and of course the Steers little seasonings which I'm going to stash away because my daughter loves these spicing on any chips. We've had to buy the Steers spicing because yeah, she's just obsessed with that. So, And then we've got a bunch of these little packets which I know some of them have wings in it and some looks like chicken pieces that are there. So I'm keen to taste those. And thankfully, they are mild. So thank you for the team at Steers um, for sending through that. There Come on, Thelma, you're from Durban. You cannot be ordering mild. No, they, they send mild. I really? <laughs> Just, <laughs> spicy is the way to go in this part of Definitely. the world. Definitely. But that smell is insane. I'm mm. gonna, yeah, but I can't tuck into that so badly on camera. How would I look? I don't even know. But yeah, we are live on Facebook and YouTube as well. We're joined by uh, Safira Kaka in studio. And, and off air, we were having an interesting conversation. And I think that's something we need to talk about to maybe bring up yeah. the issue of actually making money, yes. the struggle post COVID, because you support yes. a lot of businesses. And here in, in community radio as well, we are constantly having to think mm. how can we give the platform to small growing businesses uh, while at the same time, a business is a business. You've got to pay. There is some yeah. sort of transaction. Um, the radio station has to run also. But at the same time, you need to support uh, growing businesses and, and the need for small businesses nowadays when when the larger businesses somehow have to also consider where they're investing their budget in sponsoring mm. and advertising. And then you have the smaller business who are really counting those pennies and thinking, can I pay that money for an interview on Radio al How important is that supporting? How hard is it? How big is the struggle right now to actually... 
What needs Mid-bank. to be studied um, is uh, post-COVID how many of our families took on side hustles. True. I call them the side hustles because you had to supplement your income. You needed to. The cost of living crisis. We haven't recovered financially. No. Many families have not recovered from COVID. So for me, Salma, my platform is open to any small business yeah. because I know from a family where your income is reliant on a small business, what I saw my mother struggle. I saw my dad struggle. I saw how difficult it was to, for them to educate us. So for me to give back is to give back through this because people are, are making money and you'll go to Suko, Fair, or Pop-Up um, and you'll go and you, you'll question them. Oh, why is this so expensive? But they are not using that money for anything but feeding the kids, yeah. clothing the kids, buying something for the house, buying something, you know, nice after this fair. For a lot of them, it's that's their, their source of income for the month. That is what they're, they're earning. They're waiting for you to buy that. They're now. waiting for you to buy that. And yeah. you can see, you you may not notice it, but I've spoken to a lot of small business owners and, you know, that sale means everything to them because now I can go grocery shopping after this. Sure. And we all know the cost of living is escalating. So especially for the food pop-ups, just to make this item is costing you so much of money. Um, And that's why I believe support, support, support. You know, it's difficult for us to give airtime because we ourselves are small businesses, you could call it that, as as radio stations. We're barely trying to make ends meet a lot of the time. You know, you've got to pay your staff, you've got to pay. There's a lot of expenses that go into doing broadcast. But I've opened my entire page for small business. I said, if you guys need anything, um, I feel very shy when people send me things because I know it costs you something to send it to somebody. But I will try and post for you. I will make sure that I support and I promote because where else does our support come from? We go every day for our entire lives to the big stores. And when Gaza broke out, did they ever support us? Yeah. You know, whereas when we work in the field of marketing, we go to a small business, we say we're having a fundraiser. Can you guys give something? Uh, we just did the pink IT recently. Aunties would give us like 200 biscuits. Um, somebody sponsored like a whole a few items like cupcakes and that for our for our entrance table and to so generously sponsor for charity it comes from who it comes from the small businesses the small business. even before those big businesses you can go and write 10 letters to the banks the people we bank with the, to the everyday supermarkets we go from they're not going to give they a cent back follow protocol they these small businesses <laughs> will run at a loss yeah. but they will sponsor from the bottom of their hearts the last cent for whatever charity organizations any charity um relief work that's happening now communities so i always say encourage and support and where we can we will try and and promote you guys um you know it's it, it's tough even in the influencer space <laughs> they're charging small businesses if you can afford it yeah in, influencers and like we said micro influencers and people that are on social media and using their social media platforms um should, should not be taken for granted nope. because that that is very powerful yes. that's a very powerful tool and it's gone are the days where you just send them a cupcake and they're going to post a picture and say thank you for the cupcake nope. no no <laughs> There's there's actual protocol now. When you approach them, you have to ask them for their rates. Will yes. you post a picture? Yes. Will you post your rates? I mean, will you take a reel? Are you sharing to your stories? Um, you also now, what I like is, because I started doing that with my own Instagram, was having it as a business platform. So you're yeah. able to see your views and how people are actually engaging with your that's content true. and you know what's working. Um, because sometimes if you're somebody that is uh, wanting to perhaps monetize on your social media platform, and I had this discussion again with somebody recently who said... Uh, YouTube is a big way if you have if you're good at making uh, maybe uh, mm-hmm. a cake or something film a few videos and mm-hmm. you can actually make money mm. like that simply off yeah. the platform. Yeah. I always say do it. You just, know, people come try. to me and they say uh I want to do a cupcake business, but there's thousands of cupcake businesses, but it's not you. You yeah. don't it doesn't have your special soma kazi you have little flair that you make a cupcake. Maybe you put the eggs that. after. <laughs> maybe you put the put, okay, but it's it's how you make it. Yeah. And if it is meant for you, Allah will bring it to you. He will bring you the customers. He will bring you the clientele. Sure. You put your full trust and faith in him and we don't tie that camel. You just <laughs> go and you post and you say, Safira, Selma, please help me. I'm doing a little business. Go ah. for it. Do it. Don't be shy. Just go and do you start your business. You will see amazing things happen and that's why i'm sitting here right next to you hey, with the book the mighty watermelon we still have to touch on that we're going to still talk about uh, safira's journey on hajj what that experience was like for her uh beautiful emotional one at that as well we followed it every step of the way uh, we also know that you started your podcast 
Yes. <laughs> we want to talk about that. So we're going to go through Hajj. We're going to talk about the podcast. And we're also going to talk about the launch of the Mighty Watermelon. What is that Mighty Watermelon all about? Why is it all a buzz and craze on social media right now? And we're also giving away two signed copies to listeners uh, by the end of the program. We've got to sell countdown on our sheets. And we've got to sell chow down on our food. We've got steers and steers chippies. It's yes, chicken. I want to go into these wings, but I'm not doing it live on camera. So I'm going straight for the wings while you can enjoy playing after a very long time. We're featuring him. This one is by Tariq Owais Malinga, Abdul Malik Rajab, Hassan Manjete, Sadiq. I hope I said his surname right. I'm going to just get the correct pronunciation of his surname. But this is Salam Okotula, a beautiful one. I played some good listening to this over the weekend and I said, I'd love to play this on the Sunday Lounge. So enjoy this one. It'll take you right up until the news. Just to go through very quickly and we are regular steers uh, shoppers um, we're always getting the burgers and things like that so you can get your loaded fries uh, one of my favorite things to get from from steers is of course a loaded fried with the cheese and jalapenos on top oh. sounds good the best if you want to get it um, and there's no halal steers near you then that is probably the best stop for you stop on brick on sparks road right there and you get steers and debonairs um, where you can get what you need to with the burgers and the chips um, and then you can of course the, some of the new items is what we've got now the full chicken wings um, you also can get chicken shots you can get cocktail chicken cheese grillers and you can get death by chocolate did they send any death by chocolate no next time I'm going to make sure they send a uh, death by chocolate uh, you can get as well then of course you have your pizzas and the new thing now that we enjoyed is called a pizza wrap I love that I think that's mm, amazing that really nice. uh, they've got chicken and spicy pine that's a new flavor spicy chicken barbecue chicken barbecue beef debonair chicken and the pizza wrap has creamy beef and jalapeno oh that must be awesome uh, so they've got lots of flavors on that I love the pizza that pizza wrap type of thing that is really cool like i would have that at a party or, or something with your kids or what or even in a lunch box that's a great idea to actually have with the kids so thank you for them uh to sponsor uh, for sponsoring uh the program today and it's really is filling those tummies very nicely but let's talk something very quickly now mm. besides radio another big thing these days some people say radio is dying i disagree with that no, completely. Disagree completely but we'll uh, never never i don't i don't think anything can replace radio as you, you can listen to all the ais in the world no nope. you can and listen to anything and everything but the connection with the radio is just something else and people will roll their eyes and be like oh alan sar blah 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 but then at the end of the day when you need something to happen and you really want to boost that business and you really want increased awareness you're going to phone alan sar and be like 100%. can we come onto your show 100%. and we talk, radio is not dying. you cannot replace radio but Something else that is really catching it with everybody these days is trending is podcasts. Yes. And why do you think podcasts have become such a thing? And why did you start one? Podcasts are very interesting because a radio show, you've got to wait for content that interests or matters to you. In a podcast, there are many, 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 many topics. There's thousands of topics, niche topics. There's things that are discussed and you can listen to it at your own leisure mm. and you go uh, back and forth to school. In our Muslim community, it's taken on. It has really taken on, alhamdulillah. I started the idea about five years ago. I was very scared to launch on my own because I've been so many years in Islamic media and uh, this year was a year of leaping and blooming, alhamdulillah. So I said 6th of Feb, I'm starting my podcast and I recorded the first episode and it's been doing really, really well, Soma. I did not expect the response. I didn't expect that it opened me up to a whole new lot of listeners internationally, which was wow. fantastic, alhamdulillah. It's a struggle. I think the biggest thing that I face right now is funding because I'm self-funding episodes. Now that's what I want to know, the yeah. logistics behind it. Yeah, I, I think, so I, the response has been fantastic mm -hmm. from a Muslim community. Um, we, uh, I think I, a lot of my listeners did carry through to the podcast again opened up to a whole new listeners but advertisers don't understand the power of a podcast, podcast. you know in South Africa it's still very new yeah um they there's a lot of podcasters in South Africa but a lot of them are not Muslim <laughs> You know, they are uh, uh, South African uh, Podcasters Guild Awards are taking place this weekend, and not a single Muslim podcaster was uh, nominated in any category. Wow. Yeah. So for me, uh, it's still very new. It's relatively new, and I'm hoping people can understand the value of it. And it's not something that, um, you know, you can you can talk about anything that interests you. There's, uh, what I show, share a podcast studio with a mattress company. <laughs> they talk about 
mattresses. It's, it's fascinating. So um, it's yeah, it's been doing funny, well. Funny that you mention mattresses because yeah. uh, when we recently had to get mattresses for my kids, yes, I didn't realize. Oh, how, yeah, how Rest, much Restonic has a whole podcast on drink mattresses. It is incredible. It, like, yeah. I was surprised. My mother kept asking me, "How long did it take to choose a mattress?" No, it I takes said, very Mom, long. Did you realize how many types of mattresses you've got? There to, are? You've got to research it. <laughs> Um, so my eight episodes in, Alhamdulillah, uh, got nominated and for the best uh, podcast uh, yeah. in the spirituality uh, wow. sector in Africa. That was amazing. That is really beautiful. It was humbling. It was unexpected. I went with Crocs to the to the awards. So soon. <laughs> but so soon to actually get to, to get that kind of recognition. Uh, but like you said, it opens you up to yes. so many different opportunities. And I think that's what brands need to yes. realize yes, yes, that yes. when you're actually setting up a podcast, you are opening yourself up, not just to uh, those particular listeners that tune in. This is anybody and everybody that can search. If they're searching, how does it work? So if you're looking for a specific so topic or anything. So my called, podcast is currently called the Chai Lounge, I'm on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, I own Iono FM, everywhere. Okay. And um, you, it's very easy to listen to. Radio yeah. is a, lo- a lot more difficult. Like if I'm in Gauteng, to listen to your show will yeah. be difficult. I've got to go to the internet and stream it via, um, you know, one of those platforms. And sometimes on the phone. Just get our app. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> kind of, but <laughs> it is a little bit app. more difficult uh, than a podcast. Like it, at your leisure, yeah. you can listen to this episode that For resonates sure. with you. So, yeah. Uh, people ask me, where's the episodes? I'm asking where's the funding <laughs> so inshallah so we need to find the episode <laughs> we're, we're getting there inshallah, getting there. Getting inshallah there. for sure and uh, now that you're award-winning now i'm um, sure it will it will fall into place 20 Amen. like you said this was the leap year 2025 that butterfly is going to open and fly for all of us inshallah it was a year of blooming definitely definitely, definitely. his favorite um and we cannot play a wait to introduce him to you as well we're introducing safira to a number of new nasheeds and artists yeah, as yes. Hey, how, I'm loving how it. How has the Nasheed experience been for you so Amazing. Far? <laughs> the last one was uh, emotional and beautiful. Oh, and Ra- everything, all the fields, it evoked all the fields. For sure. Raif is amazing. He's a US-based artist and he's also signed with Awakening Records. Um, and they all got together now with the GPU. If you can, do yourself a favor and go back and watch it on YouTube or follow them on Instagram and you'll find all the artists coming together. Maher Zain surprised everyone. It wasn't announced. While Humud al-Khudr was on stage, he just popped up and came onto that stage and the crowd went, nah. They went absolutely mental uh, when he got onto the stage. So that was so fun to see them all together. And also he learned a bit of golf behind the scenes. If you follow Harris J, you'll see um, they, that Mahir Zain tried out golf for the first time. Uh, so, so you get to see a lot of uh, behind the scenes and get to understand them better as artists as well. What was beautiful was when uh, there was a private gathering with um, Malana Tariq Jamil and uh, Noman Ali Khan and a few others. And he just, Mahir Zain, start, I think I'm going to find that recording and we'll play it in a, before the end. Um, and they may, and. <sighs> Mahir sang Ya Nabi Salam Alaikum. Did you see? I saw it on TikTok. Yeah. Oh, I loved And you hear his raw voice. Yes. And it's the first time I actually heard him. Like It just, was incredible you know, it was to lovely. just sing there. And he just started singing Ya Nabi Salam Alaikum. And it gave me goosebumps because really I did. said that was just amazing. And then Masood Kurtz started singing Qasida Burda. Yes. And I was like, what? <laughs> wow. I can only imagine how the energy would have been in the room at, at that time. They are such beautiful. And you see why they are artists who they are because their voices are amazing. Really? They really can sing. But something else, when we talk energy, we think Hajj. Hajj. And, oh, and, and, my and the energy of Hajj. And we, when we covered Hajj, um, and this Hajj in particular, I worked really closely with, of course, yours truly, who we know mm. and love and watching this program very closely. Mohamed Ayaz, <laughs> we must mention it. We cannot go through the show without acknowledging Mac, his, you listening? His, his presence. He's very much listening. So, so yes, and he, he holds you in a very high regard as mm. well. Um, having a long relationship with you in CII as well from your very beginning and his very beginning. Um, so when it comes to something like Hajj, which we covered very closely, this Hajj broadcast, and you are a great part of Hajj, what was that experience like also going in, um, covering it as a whole? Because I remember at one point you said you want to get as much information to relate to people mm. so they understand mm. it also. Because yeah. sometimes people will say, yeah. why is she sharing it? You know, she's of got course. Hajj, she must yes. focus on Hajj. Yeah. But at the same time, you did so many people a favor by actually sharing so many different things, yes. the tips, what time to go out and stone that experience with the rain and yes. all that. Tell us what that was like. What was it like sharing it with people and experiencing it for yourself? I want to prefix this by saying that I, like you listening to the show, ha- have had my 
turn for Hajj. That doesn't mean that I'm on a radio presenter and I've been covering Hajj in my personal capacity for years and yeah. years and years of my career that I was able to bypass the line. So I waited eight years for my Hajj experience. And every year I would think to myself, how will I cover it the day, the year I go? Yeah. So it was a fine line, but it came very naturally. There were moments where I shared candidly, this is Hajj. These are the difficulties. These are struggles. This is the amazing part of it. Just go, just go. Everything works out when you get there. And then there was also moments where on the day of Arafat, my phone was off and I said, no, this is the day I'm dedicating to Dua. So it was really an amazing life-changing experience. If you haven't gone yet, um, I will tell you right now, go on to the Sauk website, go and put your name down, Hajj is everything and more. And the only way you will understand it is by going there and experiencing it f- firsthand. It is a journey of the mind, the body, the soul. No two people's experiences are the same. Everybody has their own journey, their own journey to Allah. You get tested before you go. You get tested there from time to time and you get tested afterwards. But you, your entire journey is a journey of love and it's a journey to find that connection. And on the day of Arafat, something happens and stirs within you. And it changes your perspective on deen and life and yourself and your soul. And it is the most beautiful thing you can do for yourself. Mentally, physically, spiritually, you're going to push yourself. So, listen, I, I walk 4,400 steps. I saw home. that when you shared that. 44,000 <laughs> steps. Me walking and up these steps is enough to carry me <laughs> You do it. It's a journey of love. You leave everything you love and everyone you love and mm. you're doing it and then you're pushing yourself. You are pushing yourself in every way, but it's the best thing on earth. Alhamdulillah. Now, having covered it for so long, when you're actually there, was there any moment that you just felt, yo, I didn't think it would be like this? Was it actually the exertion of it? Was that the, the biggest takeaway or, or so, surprise factor? When I just got into the tent. <laughs> Yeah, I needed to collect myself. So I just did an interview with Salam Media before that. I was outside. I didn't realize I was dehydrating. I got into the tent and listen, you, it is a small little space, sorry, a small little space. And I was overwhelmed. Like my brain was like overwhelmed. This is the Mina tent now. The Mina tent. Yeah. So I just felt very, very, very overwhelmed in that moment. I just felt like, I thought I was melting in every way. My brain was melting. My body was melting. I collected myself and I had a very strict, strict plan. I'm going to do this. I'm going to read this. and I'm going to read this. And my mom actually told me, she said, when there's moments where you can't do anything, just talk to Allah. Mm. And I just sat there and I just like spoke and I said, I'm having a bit of a difficult time right now. And I hope inshallah things are going to be better. And I just made dua and dua and dua and dua and dua. And eventually I started to feel a little bit better. I took some uh, electrolytes. I started to feel a lot better. And that's when it was go time. And it's a lot about mindset. Like you could at that moment say, oh my God, this is horrible. <laughs> like, what am I doing here? Or you can push yourself and say, no, this is me on Hajj. I'm going to take this opportunity. It's I'm tired. It's not the best. Um, and everyone's going to go through it. Everybody's going to yeah. go through it. And then you just change your mindset and you you give yourself that pep talk and you say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to do it well. And and you just meet people and it, it becomes the most beautiful experience. It's, I, w- I want you to experience this. You know, you said I want you to inshallah it. from your wow to him. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, um, I mean when, I, when I, mean. I covered, I'm getting email again now. <laughs> but when we covered Hajj, that was my intention. Sure. And and when we did it and, and every day we had this program, which was hosted by Fahim Jamada. And I like was so into it. And I remember um, I used to get so many statistics and all these facts and figures and the Nusa card and everything that was going on. Sorry. And then even when we went on to the, the Yeoman Jadid in the morning yes. and stuff, and I was like, Zahir Basa teased me and he says, are you like the official Hajj correspondent now? I said, seems like Allah's it. going to take you for it. And I have to give a shout out to you Durban people, your groups, your khadims, your dhikrs, your ulama, your Durban people oh, are wow. cool on Hajj. It is, you, just, you <laughs> guys that. bring the cool, the Durban people, the Ketonian people, um, uh, Alhamdulillah. Town, yes. Because our tent was opposite the Durban yeah. tent. And everybody's so kind and so oh, nice. And, you know, and Arafat was like going and like listening, you guys, the, some of the zikas and some of the talks. And it, it it's the best 
Inshallah, Inshallah. May Allah grant the opportunity to all those that are waiting to go. And like you said, you kept thinking, how would you cover it? The thought goes through my mind all the time. If I go, my father, everybody teases me and they say, you probably be by the Jamarat saying, how do you feel (laughs) throwing that stone? It's it's intention. Like it's you, you want people to experience this from your eyes and you want to do it because I want people to go there and don't be, don't be scared to feel that feeling and don't be scared. People are so scared. They give you like horror stories and they're like, no, don't do this and don't go here. And it's nothing to fear. And Allah pushes you and you, it's the best thing ever. Everybody please go for it. So I'm waiting. Inshallah. I mean, mean, inshallah for sure. Let's go for the very first time on radio. Alan Sars, your number five track for today. It's Alhamdulillah by Oman Nusrat featuring Umar Zaman. This is entirely new, vocals only. There is a music version and there's different t- sort of alternative versions to it airing for the very first time. New release uh, just this week. Enjoy this one. Oh, Alhamdulillah. Go out and grab your chicken wings from them. I think it's amazing. If you go buy a bunch of these, that's a perfect Sunday sort of lunch to have. Eh? Some lovely fresh chips and some chicken wings and your milkshakes. And you're good to go. Oh, and some of those pizza wrap things. Make sure you get yourself a pizza wrap. Yeah, I'm going to give a personal recommendation for that one. The personal recommendation. The comes. Tikka, tikka pizza wrap. Tikka. I think that was fantastic. And it's light. It's not it too heavy. Light. It was lovely. And that, that's nice. For a ch- I'm busy watching your Facebook live. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're live on Facebook and YouTube as well. Now, the moment we've been waiting for, the whole reason you're in, in Durban in the first place is to promote your new book. Yes. Why? Amidst um, everything that you do, would you decide, oh, let me write a children's book? How does that happen? Because I can't sit still. <laughs> because I don't know what's wrong with me. But, and it's um, completely written by you? Completely. The story and everything? 100,000%. Your imagination? My, it's my, my imagination came from my brain. I saw my little niece playing and I said, I'm going to write a story about Gaza for children. And I see this little scene coming up in my mind and it shows... Um, I'm like, okay, this is going to be uh, this book and it's going to be about uh, this little tiny watermelon and her little adventures on her farm and her friends are the olive trees and the antagonist in the story is this blue bulldozer and uh, that's how the story conceptualized in my mind and I decided to write it and I decided to self-publish it which was quite a feat and uh, together with Jihan who illustrated this book beautifully wow. there's a lot of details a lot of easter eggs in the book and alhamdulillah it came to life and I can't believe I'm sitting here and promoting my book to you no, it's amazing to see that because uh, to watch you do all these like live reads and the book yes. launch you did yesterday as well. Um, and I'm sure it, it, it has been received well. But did you give it to your niece first when you when you did, I did, did you read it? To I her? did. Um, it's been a process, you know, just sharing the book with everybody. Um, it's very uh, emotional because, I mean, you know, writing is so private to all of us. But uh, to go into this has been surreal. It's a surreal experience. I think this is a hajj to her. It's been accepted. For sure. And then it's also what makes it more magical. It's like you say, it's it's your private thoughts. You're putting it there. And then you know now when you see those moms coming with the book and you sign it and you see it in their bookshelves at home, you know it's being read out to children. That is your thoughts. And and what's what's your hope that comes out of this, a book like this? So my hope is that uh, children read. (laughs) children (laughs) pick up a book and families moms pick up a book and they read to their children the second is that they always remember that with patience perseverance and prayer mighty things are possible and the third is that we can use a portion of proceeds from this book and help children that are being evacuated from gaza with mental health resources i know in the in the hierarchy of needs it's not something many many would regard very highly but but as an advocate for mental health this is my intention inshallah so i'm working together with the gift of the givers foundation and i hope you guys can support this very humble endeavor of my very first debut children's book it was hard work dedication poured my soul into this book and i'd love for you guys to get a copy oh for sure inshallah we we will uh, confirm during the course of the week when when uh, sister safira uh, so talks to Alan Saad Bookshop and we'll let you know when the books are here and then you can purchase it at Bookshop. It's perfect timing to ahead of our souk uh, yes. that perhaps we could plan something for cool. souk so and, and for you lovely. to do something there. That would be great yes. uh, for you to definitely partner with that. And she's brought two books that she's signed here in studio and we wish to give that now. away. She's going to sign it right now and we're going to give it away to the first two callers. Asif, let we ask them to call in. We're going to ask them to call in to 0861. Is it 904-904? Is that the number? 
the call in number. I see, correct me first. Bunisa always helps me out. He plays that thing that says 0861 904 904. Whenever I say, we're going to just give two callers. Um, the first two callers that come through, we'll give you two of those. Uh, well, not one person. Just being signed callers. I just go. signed it. And I'm hoping you guys can get your hands the on the mighty watermelon. I'd love, I can't wait to get one for myself as well. Um, in the meantime, while we're waiting for you to call in, let's start our final four tracks. And these ones you all know and love. They're coming in from last week as well. Number four is my favorite. Muhammad Yusuf, who's working on something new, is busy filming it at the moment right here in Africa on African soil. This is Muhammad Yusuf. And all the way from Sierra Leone, Omar Ali, Ya Habibi. Um, let's see, do we have the callers online? Bismillah, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. No, I corner. What's the word for work? Not Sebenza. <laughs> I Sebenza. <laughs> Asif, can we just put the mic on there, Asif? Thank you, Asif. I there said, did we bring the Choba Kremlins with me? Because we have this thing sometimes on a Monday morning, like we have it's technical issues. Thing. I don't usually take callers on the call, so that's why they, I caught them off guard today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but, callers. <laughs> but uh, I apologize. We do have the numbers of the two callers. So if if even if we, we don't get to speak to them, sure. we're going to contact them. The two that did try calling, our apologies for that, uh, for not being able to to get hold of you. If there was any message now as we approach year end mm -hmm. to the people of the world, yes. what would you say? With what vision should they close off the year? And with what hope should they prepare for 2025? What would your advice be? Lessons to take from 2024 going into 2025. I would say be grateful. Very, very grateful to Allah for everything that we've been given. Uh, you know, just make shukr for every... We sometimes think we have it bad, but then we look at Gaza and, you know, we all know the situation unfolding there. Uh, secondly, do anything you can. Be brave. Um, if you want to start a business, start a business. If you want to do whatever you want to do, do it. Because things will never change until something changes. So ah. do it. And thirdly is free Palestine. always. Yes, yes, free Palestine, of course. Do we have the callers on the line? I heard something or the other happening now. Let's see. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. And who am I speaking to? Hey. You're, speak you're speaking to Tasneem. Tasneem. Thank you so much for calling in. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Woodbank and Pumalanga. Woo! Are you are you a regular listener of Alan Sar or Safira's? Uh both. Both. Oh, Lovely. I'm Thank really you for lovely. listening in. Are you excited? Now, how are you going to get a book? Now we have to send it to Pumalanga. <laughs> Gee, my mom is in Dublin. I'll ask her to collect it for me. Lovely. For we'll sure. Do that. Thank you so much, Tasneem. We're going to leave your book here. Do we address it to you? If Can Safira I write your name in the book, Tasneem? You can address it to my children, please. Sure. What's your children's names? Yusuf and Azra. Yusuf, Yusuf and Azra. And Azra. Lovely. She's doing that right now. We will leave it at Alansar for you. Somebody can come and collect it from tomorrow. Jazakallah, Tasneem. I will. Jazakallah. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, so uh, okay. Do we have the next caller on the line? Assalamu alaikum. Nope, not yet. Okay, thank you, Spuniso, for all your assistance and help as well. Looking at the time, time is running away from us, and we've still got our last two tracks to go. So let's go to our number two track for today. As if you know what to do. He just debuted on the, the countdown about two weeks ago with his brand new release with Zayn Bika and Isa Isambayev. It's a beautiful one. This is Can Only Be. This one you have to sing along to. It's Khadija. So lift your hands, close those windows if you're in the car, if you have to or close your kids ears if you have to and you're a bad singer but sing along with this one it's Khadija Habiba and hopefully she's there maybe it's a Khadija we never know Assalamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Salam and who am I speaking to Shamima Shamima how are you Alhamdulillah and you very well Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. where are you calling us from Shamima from mobile port from Brickfield oh, wow. oh lovely so you can run just up the road and come and collect your book yeah, I'm just around the corner <laughs> Fantastic. Do you listen to Safira Kaka often? Do you know her? Um, I've heard her Hajj her pod, podcast. Was oh, very lovely. nice. Oh, Thank Masa you so Allah. much. That's beautiful. So who can we address the book to? Uh, who can she give it to? Or who, whose names can she write inside? My kids, uh, Zahra and Gulam Hafiz. 
Zahra and Gulam Half is wonderful. So she's doing that. We're going to leave the books at Al Ansar. You can collect from tomorrow, inshallah, when the reception staff are inshallah. here. Inshallah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Jazakallah for listening. Jazakallah. Alaikum. Jazakallah. Wonderful. If you missed out on the show today, you can watch it. It is saved on YouTube as well as Facebook. We want to thank and acknowledge uh, Safira for being here and spending this time with You're us. Welcome. I know it's not easy on a Sunday morning to come through, but thank you for coming. We hope you enjoyed. I had the best time. The food the was Sunday amazing. The Sunday lounge hospitality. The company was absolutely <laughs> amazing. And now I'm going to run to the beach. Oh, because you guys like are the luckiest joke, people <laughs> on earth. You have the beach. So I'm going to be running to the beach. For sure. Enjoy. Enjoy. With, definitely with your steers chicken wings you can go and still chill course. and enjoy thank you to steers and debonair sparks road for the lovely foods um everybody's very grateful to you may allah grant all the baraka to them um, uh, on sparks road and we'll see them very very soon be coming to buy more pizza wraps i'll give the honors to you safira our number one track for today gives me great honor to announce your number one track on the sunday lounge is salam a lake by mikhail mala assalamu alaikum until next week